Hello, vinyl community. Uh, the sound is off. <laughs> Trying to play music in the background, but there we go. Yes, hello, vinyl community. A little bit loud. There we go. How is everybody? I feel like it's been a long time, uh, but my my last video was just a week ago. But <clears throat> yeah, wow. <laughs> Strange times. Strange times. So I do have some vinyl to show and um, some CDs. And during this this downtime, <laughs> I've I've picked up a, uh, uh, I, I'll just I'll just get right to it. <laughs> so I picked up this super 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 cheap base. Um. Right now, I'm using it basically as a device for making sound. <laughs> but I would love to learn to play the bass. And yeah. And I've actually played it a little bit. I, I have kind of a new project I'm, I'm doing, a new music project called Shogur. And yeah. Uh, that's S H O G R E. Uh, I don't think I've connected the do domain name yet, but you can go to sugar.bandcamp.com. I have, uh, well, a couple songs and kind of a throwaway bonus track uh, posted. I'm trying to get more into like experimental and noise rock. So we'll see how that goes. And I do play the bass on on a couple songs. Well, the two songs and the one bonus track. <laughs> anyway, now I'm doing this on Wi-Fi. I'm I'm hoping is is gonna work, um, because our Wi-Fi here has been horrible recently. Um, yeah. Uh, first, before I get too far into anything. Um, we are listening to my music project, Historic. Uh, I put this out on my own little record label, Abstract Records. See it down there. Uh, the website is bstrct.com. I had to be odd like that. <laughs> yeah, so we're listening to that. Uh, this deluxe version is currently available and then on the 9th of june the regular version is going to be available the deluxe version is only 15 bucks and the regular version is is going to be 10 bucks so um but i'll i'll show you here quickly we have the cd we have uh the deluxe little booklet I've, and I've shown this before, so I'm just going to do this quickly. This is a, a very simple little booklet, but it does have this uh, vellum, vellum cover. It's pretty cool. I actually like how that turned out. Uh, then we have a, a sticker for the for my record label. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, so um, you can either go to bstrct, is that right? bstrct.com, or you can just go to historic.com, historic with two S's. Uh, you can get it at either either place, but that's, that's what we're listening to. And in the future, in these live videos, I'm going to be featuring music of other uh, musicians in the the vinyl community 
and mus musicians that are far better than me, far better. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I've made some interesting sounds. Let's let's put it that way. Um, yeah, and I actually <laughs> I actually recently up upgraded to an iPhone uh, so I could do 4K videos. Um, this is not 4K, by the way. This is not even with my phone. Um, hey, Red, how are you? Cue the laugh. <laughs> yes, cue the laugh. Um, yeah. So, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, it, it probably didn't matter. It probably didn't matter. I was surprised to see someone come in. <laughs> Yes, anyway, uh, so again, in the background, we are listening to my very own music. Oh, yes, I was saying I'm going to be featuring music of much more talented musicians in my future live videos. Um, but for now, um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully I'm going to learn the bass guitar. But for now, it's it's an excellent device for making sounds <laughs> and I'm loving it. It was super, super cheap. It was like the cheapest bass guitar I could find. And, um, uh, yeah, it was like 70 bucks, including shipping, I believe on either eBay or Amazon. I, I don't remember which, um, this particular brand, Glary, G L A R R Y is available on either. But anyway, all right, so you want to see some music, right? Um, we have we have a couple people in here now. That's good. I'm going to start with the CDs, and hopefully we'll build up to a, a larger audience for the vinyl. Um, but I'm going to breeze through the CDs, so don't worry. And uh, hopefully this isn't all choppy. Again, the... Um, yeah, I have no way of knowing how how good the connection is right now. But anyway, all right. So these CDs, they've been sitting in this bag for I don't know how long, for months and months and months and months. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I realize I'm, I'm in the dark here. There we go. Now you can see my lovely uh, plug right there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's just take a look. Um, this was a complete blind buy, still sealed, um, but I like the both the band name and the and the um, album name. It's Bangkok Blue Tribal Roots. So I, I'm assuming it's like World Fusion, essentially. Yeah, World Fusion. And I'm doing this on my Chromebook, so the, I'm sure the picture quality isn't the best, but... Um, <laughs> oh, Shakira Live. Off, uh, live and off the record. Uh, Two-disc DVD and CD set. Um, I'm wondering if this has that... Uh, has. Uh, Uh, I was hoping it had, uh, she, she did a, a song, a, a version of the Metallica song, uh, Nothing Else Matters, <laughs> which is really, really, really good. If you haven't heard her version of Nothing, Nothing Else Matters, definitely check it out. Um, yeah. Um, a handful of tracks on the CD itself, but then the DVD is, is nice and long there. So that, that's good. Very cool. I, lo I love me some Shakira. <laughs> ah, Chris Isaac. I don't. I don't know that I've ever had this particular album in my collection, um, but I do now. <laughs> Self-titled, I guess. Um, did this predate his big album? Um, Nineteen eighty-seven. This might actually be his first album. I could be wrong, but Chris Isaac self-titled. This one looks very interesting. Um, uh, I believe classical music. So it's uh, Jean Absil, Selected Piano Works, 
um, I presume played by Daniel Blumenthal. And that's still sealed. It looks like at least two CDs. So, very cool. <laughs> Remember Run DMC? Well, this is DMC minus the run. <laughs> uh, who, who was it? Uh, Reverend Run? Was that the was that the deal? It was Reverend Run and then DMT, I guess. Um, yeah, so this should be interesting. Uh, checks, thugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> oh, that should be very interesting. I forgot I picked that up. Uh, <laughs> great white. Can't get there from here. Uh, Mark Almond, Child Star. Ah. <laughs> Two CDs, and a little insert. Uh, the Get Up Kids. I love the Get Up Kids. This is two of their EPs. Um... <laughs> Red, you're you're trying to you're trying to learn regular guitar on top of raising chickens. That <laughs> that is just so. Uh, from my perspective, anyway, it's so out of left field, but I think it's great. <laughs> uh, oh, um, I got these at, um, uh, these, and I mean, these I, I got, you know, months ago. Um, uh, it was from not the, uh, pet adoption center th thrift shop, but the pet rescue thrift shop, the foster army pet rescue thrift shop. Oh, man. It, it, it's really nice that we have two thrift shops in Riverside that support uh, animals. So, uh, yeah, the Get Up Kids, it has the EP's Red Letter Day and Wood Sun. Yeah, very cool. Now, this is interesting. Uh, bury Your Dead, Cover Your Tracks. They usually have a decent selection of um, CDs there. Not like, not like um, uh, uh, Savers. Savers is like a big, big, big uh, thrift store. So, I mean, no one can really compete with them. Um, <laughs> I should rescue some chickens. Uh, I really would. I really would. Um, but what I would actually really love to rescue is goats. <laughs> I would love to rescue goats. Oh man. If I could have some goats in the backyard, I'd be very, very happy. Um, uh, we have some Pavarotti here, uh, Tuto songs and arias. Nice little box set there. Um, we have a Donizetti Le Elisir d'Amour, uh, featuring Pavarotti. That feels a little light for, I guess it's two CDs. Okay. Yeah. Love me some classical music, opera, all that good stuff. I'm um, speaking of classical, uh, George Fred Friedrich. Handel, Handel, um, Arias, Arian Airs, <laughs> um, with Kathleen Battle singing. She's a big name in opera. Uh, then we have uh, this is a, a, an interesting mix of music, I must say. <laughs> uh, Too Late the Hero, The Revenge. And this is also a CD and a DVD. Uh, 
like how they specified the CD and the DVD. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. Oh, I, I love me some Alicia Keys. Red, I'm sure you like Alicia Keys, right? Yeah, so this is un, uh, MTV Unplugged, or Unplugged, I guess. But Unplugged kind of suggests MTV, but maybe not. I don't see MTV anywhere on here, so maybe it's just Unplugged. <laughs> yeah, Alicia Keys Unplugged. And the last CD, um, some more classical um, chant d'amour, uh, Melodies Fran Fran Francois, Francois? <laughs> Cecilia Bartoli with Myung Won Chung on piano. And I just lottered that name. All right, so time for the the vinyl. Um, wow. Uh, I, now it, the vinyl, it, it, these are things I'm, I'm going to be covering in actual videos rather than a live video. So consider this a preview. <laughs> All right. So the first three actually came from an artist on uh, Bandcamp. Um, it's an artist I added to my internet radio station, Abstract Radio, um, Abstract Radio Worldwide, actually. Um, yeah. He's called Sicker Man. And this is Off the Trail. So he does experimental music, drone, um, avant-garde, and among a, a bunch of electronics and whatnot, he plays the cello. So that is very, very interesting. And this is on blue vinyl. It's not showing well on the screen there, but nevertheless, this is a fantastic album, and I couldn't believe how cheap the the vinyl was. I, I could be wrong. I want I want to say it was fifteen dollars plus shipping. Um, uh, and this came from Germany, so the you know the shipping was a little steep, but surprisingly not as not as uh, uh, steep as I I would think it would be. But it, it, this did come from Germany. Fantastic. Sicker Man. So sickerman.bandcamp.com. Uh, he might have his own website as well. Um, I don't see it quickly offhand. but And as a bonus, and maybe partially in thanks for me adding his music to um, Abstract Radio Worldwide, he sent me a couple other records of... of previous projects. Um, so this is also Sicker Man. And this one, this one, I think, I don't remember if it's an EP or not, but this, um, oh, oh, his website is sicker-man.com. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is more of the same experimental avant-garde um, even even a little bit into noise and, and drone. Um, yeah. So the, it has two songs. I, I'm pretty sure they're, you know, longer songs, but I, I want to say it's, I want to say it's an EP. Yeah, it's, it's an EP because uh, um, it's at 45 RPM. But even at that, I mean, they're, you know, they're long songs. So he included that, and then this is a, another project. Where's the opening? Oh, there we go. Um, Mini Pops Jr. and uh, yeah, um, so this one is a, a little bit different. 
So the, the instruments are uh, tenor saxophone, flute, auto harp, melodica, tambourine, and kalimba. And then um, he, uh, he being uh, Tobias, uh, AKA Sicker Man, uh, plays electric guitar, cello, synthesizer, drums, effects, live looping, and field recording. Um, so th this was a, a collaboration with another uh, musician um, they're called Mini Pops Jr. And this album is Como. Coma. 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 Yeah. So very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Now, the, the next few um, come courtesy of uh, Matt Hayes, um, he was very, very, very generous in some VCLT, and uh, we actually uh, met up the other day, and we, our original intention was to meet up at Mad Platter, but they are closed, but what worries me is half their inventory was gone. So I'm hoping they're not permanently closed. That would be devastating because then we would be uh, back down to one record store in Riverside, um, which would be the rat hole, which um, is very pricey. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, so we ended up going to Barnes and Noble um, and we, we, we had lunch. Uh, we were careful. Don't worry. We were, we were careful, but it was, it was nice getting out. <laughs> so he was very, very generous. Uh, now this, he, he, I don't remember the story behind it, but, um, I think just because it was 50% off, he, he bought it. Um, and I don't know how I missed this when they had their, their 50% off sale at the beginning of the year, but Egypt station, I have this on CD, but he, he gave me, he gave it to me on vinyl. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Matt. My goodness. Oh, still sealed. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and then this also uh, from the 50% off. I'm, I might have this, but an old copy that's probably slightly beat up. Um, you know, from Goodwill or what have you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh. And <clears throat> again, I, I don't remember the story behind this one either. Um, this one, I, I'm pretty sure he got off uh, either eBay or Discogs. I don't remember which. Um, but you know, I didn't, <laughs> this is Simon and Garfunkel bookends. I, I guess I should actually say what it is and not just assume everybody knows, but, um, yeah. So this is, uh, uh, the Beatles anthology one anthology, Beatles anthology. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. Very cool. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. All right. So I, I mentioned that we went to um, uh, Barnes & Noble. And I found a couple little pockets of 50% off records, even though that sale ended probably months ago. <clears throat> and... I think these were actually there by mistake because they didn't ring up, ring up at 50%, but they adjusted the prices for me. So I was pleased about that. Although it took them forever to do it <laughs> as Matt can attest. Um, uh, so uh, Mick Jagger got to get a grip. Not familiar with this album, but I, I love Mick Jagger. England lost. Uh, huh. 
I'm wondering now. I sure hope this isn't. <laughs> I sure hope this isn't a 12 inch single. I'm a little worried now. Because it has one on that side and one on that side. Hmm. Does anybody know? Uh, let's let's catch up on Red's comments here. Um, an eco pack, yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, the uh, yeah. Um, so the the first few records. Sorry, I I, I I I lost track of your comments there, Red. The first few records were from Bandcamp.com. And then the next ones I showed were from Matt. And now these, uh, the next few are from Barnes and Noble. The 50% off. I'm re in fact, I might open this up. It's because I'm really concerned that this is, um, that this is a 12 inch single. And the, Normal price was twenty three ninety nine, and at fifty percent off, that'd still be twelve dollars. I would never pay twelve dollars for a twelve in a single. Um, I mean, unless, unless it was something I really, really, really wanted. Let's. I I have to find out. Oh man, <laughs> I was just so excited to see it. I I just snatched it up. And these are not the best scissors to do this. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, ooh, I'm getting a lot more viewers now. I'm just trying to open this this vinyl uh, to find out if it's a 12 inch single or an EP or what the heck it is because you know I I still paid 12 bucks for it. So okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm a little concerned. Uh, this doesn't bode well. This does not bode well. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's a 12-inch single. Oh, man. Damn. They better be good songs, man. <laughs> uh, I was just so excited. I, I barely even... I barely even looked at it. Uh, so, two songs. Gotta get a grip. And England lost a twelve dollar twelve inch single. <laughs> oh man, I'm regretting that one now, and and now I'm regretting that I opened it because I probably could have sold it or something. But I guess I still could. But <laughs> uh, anyway, let's make up for it with with these. Um, very thrilled. I now I love the Jayhawks but I'm only familiar with their big album that had the song Blue on it. Um, so this is uh, the Jayhawks, Backroads and Abandoned Motels. This was also marked 50% off. And this is a full-length album. <laughs> and this was priced at $19.99, so uh, it was 10 bucks. Yeah. Heck yeah, I'm going to pay that for a brand new Jayhawks album. And this is from... Uh, Oh, wow. 2018. A very recent album. Anybody else like the, the Jayhawks? Hey, how's it going? Uh, and I can never pronounce your name. I apologize, but Kudehi. Kudehi? I don't know. Uh, 1960. I'll just call you 1960. <laughs> uh, uh you think the store didn't realize it was a 12-inch single? Probably not. Because 20, $24 or $25 for a 12-inch single, um, you might pay that for record store day, but <laughs> that's fine. It works. Good, good. All right, 1960 it is. <laughs> oh, man. Unless you could put the phonetics there for me. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, yes. Uh, so thrilled to pick this up. It, it's going to be a, a brand new listen for me. And I didn't know they were making music that recently. 
And again, for those that just joined, we are listening to my own little music, uh, drone, drone music, uh, historic. Uh, this is the beginning of history <laughs> at historic.com, historic with two S's. But anyway, another Jayhawks. I was thrilled to find two Jayhawks. Uh, this one is Paging Mr. Proust. Paging Mr. Proust. Another full-length album, not a 12-inch single. <laughs> uh, this was also originally $20. I paid $10. Bucks. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. And this one, I'm trying to see a copyright on this one, but... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, 2016. So a little bit older. All right. So that is those. And there's more. And these, uh, this next batch is really, really good. Um, so, yeah, stick around. <laughs> Woo. Sorry, girls. I scared the girls. I knocked the drawer. <laughs> All right. Now, this is a band, and I'm going to do a separate video for this. Um, this is just a preview of upcoming videos, shall we say, because I've actually been buying vinyl. <laughs> Um, yes, so I had heard this band before, but they kind of left my mind, and then I met my wife, and she reintroduced me to this band, and they're possibly in my top 10 favorite bands now, or maybe just outside of it, but they're up there, yeah. <laughs> Placebo. So this is Sleeping with Ghosts with that seductive cover, which I'm probably going to get censored. <laughs> uh, now, it, admittedly, this is not uh, this is not my my favorite album by them. Um, I I believe it was reasonably successful though. But yeah, uh, placebo. So um, sleeping with ghosts. Um, really, the, the the first three tracks were kind of eh, I could have done without them. Um, the, the first really good track for me was the the uh, title track, uh, "Sleeping with Ghosts." That that's a killer song. So I love that. Oh, they, this has got to be their best album. Um, Placebo Meds. Let's see. <laughs> Good day. He is, is a, a city in L.A. County. But I'm from Riverside County. <laughs> I know they're they're like practically next door. Um, <laughs> that is funny though. Uh, oh, and there's also a, a city of Kudahi, and I I'm guessing it's like Kuday, like you don't even pronounce the H Kuday Kuday, something like that. <laughs> uh, this is the. Uh, I have to say this is their best album, Meds. Even though allmusic.com doesn't doesn't fully appreciate it. I think they give it three stars. And I'm like, what? Like every every song on here is killer. Every single song on here. This has very uh, seductive artwork also, which um, could get me censored. But it's not going to stop me from showing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kuda Hey? Kuda Hey? Or Kuda Hey? Kuda Hey? Kudehe. Okay, okay, I accept that. 
Uh, but I may still call you 1960. Because, <laughs> you know, in 30 minutes, I'm going to forget how it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, so killer, killer, killer album. Um, and it possibly has my favorite song by Placebo, Follow the Cops Back Home. Now, it, Placebo's, you know, they're, they're known for being neo glam. Um, but they're, they're actually kind of a punk band, pop punk, mind you, but punk nonetheless. And they're loosely tied in with Britpop, but I wouldn't call them a Britpop band though. Yeah. They're, they're far closer to punk than they are Britpop. Um, yeah. I, I just love this album so much. Every single song on there is fantastic. Fantastic. I hope the picture is all right. Is it, is it choppy at all? Because I can't tell on my end. There haven't been any error messages or anything, so I'm, I'm hoping. These, by the way, um, the Placebo albums came from Amazon. Uh, it had been a while since I looked for Placebo on vinyl. And the last time I had looked, their albums were between 25 and $35, which I really try not to pay that for, for vinyl. Um, but I, I did a search recently and they came up as like, I don't know, 1649. And I was like, heck yes. So I bought four of them. And uh, then the one I didn't pick up, which was uh, Without You, I'm Nothing, which is another fantastic album. That one, uh, I had it in my cart and I intended on on buying it. At, it came down to 1649, like after these others did. And I had it in my cart and I forgot to check out. And then it went up by about $2. So, ah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, uh, Placebo Battle for the Sun. One of these, I don't even remember which one now, but one of these has Michael Stipe on vocals. Uh, well, uh, backing vocals, I guess. Or a duet. I don't know. I don't know. As Michael Stipe. Although it doesn't even really sound like him. He's doing a lower register than he usually does. I don't know about you guys, but I love drone music and I love making it. So, so that's what we're listening to. Um, placebo overload. No way, man. No way. And I do have, I do have, um, without you, I'm nothing coming. Um, Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is battle for the sun. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out where these rank, um, but uh, yeah, none of these can touch meds or without without you I'm nothing. Um, but hopefully I should have that. I think tomorrow. Could be wrong. Yeah, placebo. <clears throat> and the last one, of course. Or placebo <laughs> black market music again this is just a, a preview of upcoming videos I'm going to be doing so hopefully I'll um... oh yeah yeah 1960 good job it definitely is subscribe to his channel he uh, he has some some great videos um, and I need to catch up on so many videos in the VC. It, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. So black market music. Love these gatefolds. Nice big pictures. Yeah. So that's that. And I guess we'll just hang out. I'll play some bass guitar. Not really. Uh, I still need to learn it first. Yeah. So, Red, you're you're uh, learning the guitar. Are you are you starting on an acoustic guitar or, um, 
or electric or what what what's the what's the story there? I should have brought a drink. It's it's warming up in here. <laughs> yeah. I was on the the last track now. It's it's like a 7 minute track, but uh Oh, okay. An acoustic for $100. So it's, it's probably a a pretty decent one, right? At $100 because I know acoustic guitars you can get yeah, a super cheap one for like what fifty or sixty. Of course, I mean you could also buy an acoustic guitar for you know thousands of dollars. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah. So when when did you uh, start the guitar? It was it was that very very recently. Because other than making sounds on the bass uh, and and doing very simple bass rhythms or bass lines, the started one with, with accessories. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's good. I once had an acoustic guitar, um, and I I don't even remember. Oh, I got it for Christmas one year. I think I never. I never did much with it. And so at one point I just decided to sell it. And in my mind, it was a full size guitar. And then, uh, I advertised it in the newspaper that tells you how long ago this was. And so the guy comes to buy it and he says, you realize this isn't a full size guitar. <laughs> this is a, like a student guitar. I was like, Oh, so, you know, he talked me down quite a bit from the price I was asking, but uh, it made sense because honestly, I, I in retrospect, I know it, it wasn't the full size guitar. Um, at the time, I had no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway. Um, uh, yeah, when, yeah, that's, that's basically when I got this. So it's like, I just felt, and it's it's kind of sad because I, I've intended on on practicing during this time, especially when I was working from home. But now I'm no longer working from home, so uh, I feel like I kind of blew my chance to really spend some time with it. But yeah, uh, but we're, we're still getting sent home early, um, and actually, uh, well, I left very early yesterday, but, uh, the others left early also, um, because of the, they, they had, um, curfew. They set up a 6 PM curfew because of all the craziness in this world. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. How long have I been playing? Oh, oh yeah. It was just, just when, when COVID began, um, I, I started like on the keyboard, um, although, uh, you know, I wouldn't even call myself self-taught. I, I just, I, I make sounds, I make sounds. <laughs> um, so you might even call me a, like a sound artist. I mean, we're listening to my music right now. This was, this album was done on, uh, 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 I think a six oscillator little handmade electronic synthesizer. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't mind you asking at all. I I work in a public library, so our library is still closed. Um, we're we're planning a phased reopening, so we're gonna have like a curbside service uh, where people can pick up books. Um, but. Uh, it, it, the whole process is going to take quite a while. Um, 
and I'm, I'm glad for that because, you know, they're watching out for our safety. Ah, uh, you started it out as a library page? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, fortunately, I, I don't know how I managed to do it, but I, I started as uh, a library associate too, part-time, mind you. Um, I, I think it's because I, I had I had a fair amount of uh, bookstore experience. So I, I think that helped a lot. I worked briefly at Barnes and Noble, setting up the one in uh, Peoria, Illinois. And then uh, I was the, the supervisor of um, Crown Books when it uh, had become a bargain bookstore. Um, the original Crown Books had gone out of business. Uh, this guy swooped in and bought up their name and their, uh, you know, whatever they had left and opened a bunch of stores. And I helped set up that store as well. Um, and I worked my, my butt off and in, including uh, bleeding during the cleanup process of, uh, we were in this, uh, this old rundown <laughs> uh, grocery store. Uh, I think it was uh, Avon's. Um, but it had long since closed. The roof was horrible. There was actually holes in the roof. Um, and we had pigeons inside to prove it. <laughs> oh, and then when it rained, oh my gosh, I, I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> there were like huge puddles. And my district manager just told me, well, just move books out of the way and make sure they're not getting wet. <laughs> As water's pouring down th through the, the ceiling. Um, I, I sound like I'm from extreme northern Illinois. <laughs> well, it goes like this. So, and I don't know that I've told this story on my channel before, but uh, my dad is a hillbilly from uh, uh, Virginia. Well, that, I always get confused because he he grew up in Virginia, Rose Hill, Virginia. But then there's there's talk of ten. Anyway, he's a hillbilly. Let's just put it at that. Uh, my dad is a hillbilly, and my mom uh, spent her formative years in the jungles of Peru. Uh, my grandparents were missionaries, so uh, in school. Uh, as if people didn't already think I was weird. I told them uh, my dad was born in a log cabin, which was true. And my mom was raised in the jungle, which was also true. So <laughs> uh, how do I feel about the computer age taking over physical music? Um, I'm, I'm very glad that it has not killed physical music. Um, the fact that it hasn't even killed cassettes is pretty mind blowing. Um, Cause I mean, th let's be honest, cassettes are uh, out of the, the current, for well, out of the currently readily available formats, cassettes are the, the poorest sound quality. Let, let's just face it. If you, if you have, the ideal equipment with a, the most modern cassette, it can sound pretty damn good. But if it's your average cassette from from the cassette era on, you know, average equipment, yeah, it, it's... I, I would definitely put vinyl above above that. But, um, and of course, there's, there's the whole argument of, you know vinyl versus CD. Um, uh, honestly, I think vinyl can't touch CD because CD is, you know, that's it. You're hearing the music exactly how it was intended. And with vinyl, no matter how, how good your system is, how clean the record is, there's always going to be some noise always. Um, where there's like even one tiny little pop, it's going to be on there. I guarantee it. <laughs> but 
Oh, hey, hey from Ire Ireland, Ireland, uh, the, the, the um, home of my people. <laughs> I, I, growing up, I always thought I was I was of Scottish descent, but one of my uncles before he died had uh, one of the DNA tests done, and it, it came back as Irish. So there you go. Um, yeah, indie discs. Welcome, welcome. I, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't recall if you've been on my channel before. Uh, if you have, I apologize. But um, again, you know, I've been kind of off and on my my channel and had hiatuses and yeah. But anyway, welcome to this video. Um, yeah. <laughs> The run out area, yeah. <laughs> um, Red says uh, vinyl has always been above tape, except for the run out area. So, yeah, but you know, there's there's a charm to cassettes. Um, I mean, I have like a thousand of them, so I haven't actually counted. But oh well, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that, Indy. Yeah, thank you so much. Very cool. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing these these live videos on a much more regular basis. Oh, the album started over. I was like, why is it still going? It's been over 50 minutes. And it's like, a, I don't know, a 47 minute album, something like that. Um, again, listening to my own little album, Historic. Um, just drum music. So I figured it'd be good for the background. But um, yeah, thank you so much, Indy. I, I appreciate you watching. I really do. Um, I want to get better about making videos, um, and I'm I'm definitely gonna have these live videos on a regular basis again. There was a time where all I did was live videos, and I do like t two or three per week. So, um, yeah. So thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. Now, getting back to 1960, getting back to your uh, um, question about about the computer age and music, um, I I love I love the fact that I, I subscribe to Amazon uh, Prime uh, Music Unlimited, <laughs> and I love the fact that if I hear about a new album. Or if I think of an older album, like remembering, oh yeah, I remember this album. I can look it up on there and listen to it at a moment's notice. You can't beat that. That's just, that's the beauty of streaming music. And the fact that you can literally listen anywhere. You can be on a hike and, and be listening to music. Um, sure, with, you know, with CDs and, and cassettes and mini discs you had the you know the little Walkman, but um, but yeah, it, streaming music definitely, definitely, definitely has its place. I typically su subscribe to like two or three streaming services at a time, so um, yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, at, at home actually, I have a, a mix of formats that I listen to just. Well, right now we're listening to a CD. Um, uh, it, honestly, more often than not, y even at home, it's kind of streaming because you know I can be up and around and doing things and going room to room and still be listening. And we have the, you know, the Echo, the Amazon Echo, and do the multi-room feature, which I love. Um, so very, very handy. Uh, <laughs> do some food tasting videos. Well, did you see the ones I posted? You saw the ones I posted on Facebook, right? Um, there was the the vegan snack box, and there was the oh the oh the 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 vegan uh, pork rinds or pigless pork rinds, as they say. <laughs> <clears throat> um, 
yeah, I don't know that I would put these on this channel. I, I think, I think I would lose too many subscribers. <laughs> oh man. And I struggle as it is. Uh, it's taken me forever just to get the, to the point that I'm at now. Um, let's see. 1960 is hard for you to uh, depend on streaming for your entire music collection. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I can see that. And <clears throat> in any format, there's, there's albums that were released in that particular format that were never released in any other format. I'm sure there's even eight tracks out there that never made it beyond eight tracks. Um, and that's, that's really why I collect all three of the current formats. I, 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 I just couldn't stomach. I, I tried eight tracks and I just couldn't stomach it. The, the sound quality is inferior. And even worse than that is you have songs getting cut off in the middle to flip tracks. And I, that's just, <laughs> but I'm sure there's, there's music out there on eight track that you can't find anywhere else in any other format. Um, and I, I think that's kind of sad. So that's, that's, that's why I kind of, uh, uh, collect the, you know, vinyl cassettes, CD and streaming. So I, I have most of my bases covered. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So you use uh, what? Uh, what's the song? Is is that the the name of the app, or or that's just the command you're giving it? Because um, I recently switched to to uh, an iPhone, so I could do 4K videos, and um, I, I haven't used the feature on there yet. But you know, you can ask you can ask Siri. Um, you know, what's this song? So I assume that's what you're talking about. Uh, previously on my Note 8, I used... Uh, I'm not even going to remember the name of the app now. It was one of the more common ones. It started with an S, but, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, but, we, like, if I'm out and about and I hear music playing, I, I have to do that. And it's a good way to keep track of it because it, it, that particular app would catalog, you know, what songs you've looked up. So I may have to get that for the iPhone actually, because I don't, I don't think Siri will do that. Um, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big thing with, with all streaming media, whether it's music or TV or what have you. For example, I've been I've been watching uh, Cheers on TV. <clears throat> I was watching it on Netflix, and you kind of think in your mind, you know, it's on Netflix. I'm gonna always subscribe to Netflix, so I'm always gonna have Cheers. Well, they got rid of Cheers. <laughs> Hulu has it now. Fortunately, I subscribed to that too, so I was able to still catch up on it. But um, but yeah, that's a, that's an excellent excellent point. Um, oh, let's see here. Yeah. It, it, the stuff will just disappear from these streaming surfaces. And <clears throat> like I, I subscribe to, uh, I should have had to drink here. <laughs> <clears throat> I subscribe to, uh, uh, movie service called, <laughs> oh, uh, Criterion Channel. And at least they're upfront about it. Um, they have a section on there that says, uh, these movies leaving our service at the end of the month. So it's like, oh, hurry and watch them so that, you know, before they disappear. So, <clears throat> so in that regard, you definitely can't be, you know, physical media because you buy it, you own it. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's kind of strange because it, it, at least to my knowledge, streaming media has, has pretty much killed uh, like MP3 downloads. Um, I, I, the only time I download uh, MP3s is on Bandcamp and that's like independent music. So it's, you know, 
but as far as like modern music that's available in other forms, I don't even bother with MP3s. It's it's a waste of time. <clears throat> um, so it's strange that you know streaming media has 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 killed it, and yet people think they will always have access to that music, but they won't. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, 4K video is is basically the the latest um, uh, quality of, of video. So previously, HD was the thing, and that's you know also known as 1080p. Um, 4K is I don't know that it's four times that, but it's significantly, significantly better. Most modern TVs that you get now are 4K. They support 4K video. So, um, <clears throat> and I didn't, I didn't really get, I, I don't need 4K video for my, my vinyl community videos. I, there's not much of a point for that, but I have another channel called first person walker and somehow i stumbled upon this sort of other community of youtubers and <laughs> they all do these these walking videos that's very often just them walking uh whether it's around you know fancy cities or out in nature or I just have been doing videos here in, in Riverside so far. Um, and it, it, it's just them walking and it's like virtual walking basically. So that's where I got the name first person walker because it, it's, it's kind of from my perspective as I'm walking and you know, you get, you get the sights and sounds and uh, you get the, uh, uh, you know, birds chirping, and you sometimes you can hear my footsteps, and um, I guess I could kind of market it in the sort of weird ASMR uh, market, <laughs> but I, I I'm not really going for that audience. Um, you know, if they if they find my videos, that's fine. But yeah, there's a, a walking community, um, and. Uh, the general idea, or at least part of the idea of these, is you can put this on your TV and and walk on a treadmill, and then you have something nice to look at. That's that's essentially you know what it is. But um, <clears throat> go grab a cool drink. I know I'm. It's 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 getting warm. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Red, you, you stop Netflix. That's ten dollars I can use for Taco Bell. <laughs> oh yeah, I I do really enjoy uh, Taco Bell. They have their uh, what is it? Their power menu or it's like a, a lot of uh, like black bean based items, um, vegetarian friendly. Um, so I, I love that. More often than not, we go to Del Taco actually. Um, Oh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Red use um, a mix of MP3 and YouTube official audio. Okay, okay. Um, Yeah, yeah, that that's exactly why the the quality is so crystal clear. Um, 4K is like amazing, and iPhones in you said you have an iPhone, right? Yeah, yeah, and iPhones in particular are known for a very very good camera, and that's one reason I switched because <laughs> I was a diehard Android fan, and in particular, I loved my Note 8, but the camera on it is crap. Um, it keeps, it keeps trying to refocus and it's just, the, the, the picture is fine, but it has that focusing issue and it just drives me crazy and it barely, barely, barely supports 
4K um, because it was it, 4K was just starting when that phone was out. Um, and of course, now they're on what the Note 10 or something like that. Um, but I, I switched because the this iPhone was the iPhone 11 was actually uh, a cheaper. Not this. This is not the iPhone. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want people thinking this iPhone footage here because I'm sure it's very low quality. It's just my Chromebook, but <laughs> yeah. But it, it, iPhone has amazing video, amazing video. <clears throat> I actually um, uh, filmed a, a little video. I don't think I did it in 4K. Actually, uh, I filmed the video um, of me walking around in the backyard with with our cat before we had to put him to sleep. And I'm, I'm really glad I did that because, uh, the, the quality is just amazing and you get, it, it, he does these little muse in it and it, it's just, Oh, I, I miss him so much, but yeah. Let's see, Red. You're you're saying do that. Walk from downtown to the Metrolink station across the freeway. Um. Oh, I I see what. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. I actually that is one one walk. I'm well. I'd be going in the reverse direction actually. Um. There's a, a restaurant right near there. Um. Uh, the old spaghetti factory. And um, so basically I'm, I'm going to be starting there and then walking under the bridge and down Michigan Avenue, uh, looking at all the historic buildings. So that that's a video I have planned for that channel. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Thank you. 1960. Um, uh, yeah. We're, we, we have our two dogs. Um, but even they're, you know, getting up there, uh, one more so than the other. But um, being dog people, we, we and it's kind of sad to say, but we, we didn't realize, like, just how much we would miss our cat. <clears throat> we knew that, you know, we would miss him, of course. We loved him. But we just didn't realize, like, what a big role he played in our lives. And there's definitely something missing in our house <laughs> and it's just not the smell of the, it's not just the smell of the litter box. <laughs> That's one thing I won't miss, but I, I would take that back in a heartbeat if we could have him back. Um, yeah. Bertram, that was his name. Yeah. We had some battles back in the day. <laughs> He had an attitude. He came from New York, New York City. We we adopted him. Uh, I I would say sight unseen, but we had seen a picture of him, and we had him flown out from New York. So, um, oh yeah. Oh, the the Spanish restaurant is gone. Um, what was that? Uh, uh, Sevilla. <coughs> So the story with Sevilla is um, there was there was a, a stabbing there um, because they, they have they have a restaurant and then they also have a nightclub. So uh, there was a stabbing at the nightclub, and for whatever reason, the city decided that the the nightclub had to be shut down. I, I don't remember the whole story of it, but, um, and the owners of Sevilla said, well, you know, most of our money comes from the nightclub. So if you're going to shut down our night nightclub, we're closing all of our doors. <laughs> and they did. It, it happened very, very quickly. So yeah, that restaurant is gone. We never did get a chance to, uh, uh, go to the, um, they had a brunch there and I heard it was good, but we'd never had a chance to go. <clears throat> 1960, you have a, a little dog. 
She follows you everywhere. Oh. She insists that you hug her before you leave every morning. <laughs> oh my goodness. That that is awesome. That is awesome. Now, um, out of our two dogs, they they both they're both very attached to me in particular, but they love us both. Um, uh, but one in particular, the older one, Agatha, um, she she's that way. She'll she'll follow me everywhere. Um, and at some point, the dogs decide that they <laughs> that they they want to go to bed because they. <clears throat> we used to we used to keep them out here um, to go to bed, but we just broke down and now we let them sleep with us. Um, so um, at some point, they, they it's clear that they want to go to bed. They they kind of start walking that way, and like Agatha will look back at me, and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, it's time, and and, uh, <laughs> and so then I'll start walking behind her, but then if I get distracted with something and, and stop she'll stop and wait and, and look back at me like are you coming or what <laughs> uh, so she's that way too and then and then you know they have their their bedtime routines like when I get in bed Madeline the the younger one comes up and curls up against me and then Agatha uh, she starts out under the bed but once she hears me get in the bed she'll she'll come up on the bed and she insists that I, I leave one of my feet out and she licks my foot for a while and then she'll curl up and, and go to bed. And then usually around that time, especially when, once my wife gets in bed, then, then Madeline will, will switch from my side to, <laughs> to curling up next to her, my wife. So <laughs> dogs are the best, man. Coming home to a dog is, is just amazing. They're looking out the window for you, and when you come in, or when they even see you out the window, they're like so excited. And then when you come in, they're, they're like getting their toys to play with you, and jumping up and down, and wagging their tails, and running back and forth. It, it's just amazing. And you know, we're never gonna have kids. And as excited as a kid might get when their parent comes home they wouldn't get that, that excited. I guarantee that. <laughs> so you, dogs are better than kids. <laughs> oh man, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. One, one of your little baby chicks is so yappy. <laughs> oh man. Now, Baby Chicks reminds me of uh, one summer we went back to visit my dad. Uh, he was in Illinois at the time, and my uncle, I think, was in in Indiana. I think that's right next, next to Illinois, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Uh, he was in Indiana, and he had a, a farm... And so we went to visit him, and and they had little chicks, and they would, oh, just we would pick them up, and they were like so incredibly soft, and oh, <laughs> ah, 1960, you have kids, and I'm right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, your kids might get excited to, to see you come home, but not in the same way a dog would, you know. Well, I mean, they called dog's men's best friend for a reason. Um, and it, it's, it's a very good reason. They, they love us in a, a very unique way, actually. Very unique. Bertram loved us, but, you know, he was more nonchalant about it. <laughs> he, he would wait in the window and, and watch for us to come home. Um, yeah, so in his own way, he was, he was yeah. Hey, Matt, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I haven't done a live video in a long time. It is towards the end now. It's been going for an hour and almost 15 minutes. Uh, you missed a lot. I showed a bunch of vinyl, including the placebo, 
and the records you gave me and the records I bought at Barnes and Noble. Although I'm, I'm going to do actual videos for all those items. Um, this was a preview of, of what's to come. I hadn't done a live video in a long time, so I figured I'd jump on here and, um, Oh, that reminds me I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to email work because I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm not going in today because, uh, unfortunately we're, we're finally burying our, uh, my wife's grandmother. She was a hern too. So, um, I, I <laughs> read, I, I've, I've basically told Matt that I have no interest in going back to the rat hole. His prices are out of hand and uh, just the way he runs it, it yeah, I mean, just price the albums and don't do this looking things up and trying to find out what, you know, what you could get for it on Amazon or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, 1960, a, a dog will love you unconditionally. That is so true. So true. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I should really message them to let them know. <laughs> I was supposed to do that earlier, but then I got on this live video. I wasn't expecting this live video to go so long. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you so much for joining me, 1960. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. You take care too. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try and message on, on my cell phone. I I should have sent an email, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna message on my my cell phone here, and hopefully that's good enough. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it's kind of funny. Matt, Matt keeps going to the rat hole like it's like it's a bad addiction. But, I mean, it, it might be the only record store we have left in Riverside. Oh, man, Red, uh, YouTube tried to block your comments. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is funny. I had to allow your comment. It blocked it. The Bayou 1960 all set back. Um, it it had me approve that comment. That's very strange. What what issue did it have with that? Um, sorry, I'm just gonna <laughs> uh, message work real quick. Hopefully I said to the right person. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, I don't know. Um, I see. I wanted to, I wanted to have my, my, uh, uh, experimental abstract music, um, internet radio station playing in the background. But I know at least one artist I I'm playing on there. Um, I think I think there's I think their uh, music is is um, uh, copyright controlled. I guess you might say or DRM is that still a thing? Um, digital rights management. Um, and I don't want to be banned from live streams again, <laughs> especially since I'm just getting back into them. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. So again, I wasn't intending on this being so long, but oh, uh, man, I, one thing you missed, and I don't know that I even told you about it. Uh, Red and I are going to form a band. 
not really, but um, he's he's taken up playing acoustic guitar, and I'm I'm taking up the bass guitar. So uh, right now, I just use it for for making sounds for my experimental music. But um, yeah, I yeah, I I would love to learn the bass, and actually, I, I had intended on practicing a lot more um, before I went back to work, but now, yeah, I would love to be able to play an instrument too. <laughs> now, whether or not it's going to happen, I don't know. Um, I very, very briefly, uh, well, I guess not that briefly for maybe a year. I took piano lessons I, I never got very good. I don't have the coordination for both hands. Um, and then for a couple years, I actually played the trumpet. Um, and I really, I, I was never that great, but I really, really regret giving that up because I think I could at least be a, a decent trump trumpet player now, but um, yeah, so, you know, I have my keyboard and I, I do my interesting music with it. I have a bunch of, uh, little, um, electronic instruments, uh, oscillators and such, um, for making like this, this drone music. Um, <clears throat> and now I'm, I'm going to have the bass and I'm, I'm going to try getting a little bit into like noise rock or experimental rock. Um, oh, that was my boss messaging back. Okay. She, she's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, all right. Here's a question for you, Matt. If you could play an instrument, which one would it be? Oh, uh, while, while I'm waiting for your, your answer to that, um, I also play the, the cajon and um, the um, uh, piano. Okay, okay. Now, did, did you ever have piano lessons? That's the next question. Um, yeah, I, I, I recently got um, cajon bongos. And those, I really get rocking on those. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm actually pretty darn good at percussion. I mean, obviously, I would need a lot more practice. Um, but I think that that's probably the area where I would do the best, perhaps. Like, I, I don't ever see myself being a, a really good like bass guitarist or anything. And this was just like a very super cheap. It, it was seventy bucks, including shipping. So. Yeah, you had a, a, a keyboard as a kid. I had the I had the Casio SK one. It was actually pretty amazing, especially for a, a toy keyboard. It had a sampling feature where you could record your voice and then and then do your voice at the different notes. It was, that was pretty amazing, pretty amazing. I wish I still had it because those are actually highly sought after now. It was a Yamaha. Okay. Yeah. They had a lot of the, you know, like entry level and, and even, I don't know that I'd call them toy uh, keyboards, but children's keyboards maybe. But yeah, this is my glary base. 70 bucks on Amazon. Now it does have issues with the, with the electronics. Um, there's like a constant hum, uh, which for my music works fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for my music, that works fine. But at some point, I want to get that fixed because, uh, you know, I want to be able to do regular b bass as well. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Uh, It, it was a, a kid's keyboard. Okay. Y 
Yeah, uh, let's see. We we have a couple of guitar centers or a few in neighboring cities. Um, uh, they uh, they have albums in PVG format. I'm not sure what that format is, and I'm probably gonna feel feel silly for not knowing, but. Uh, also, turntables that aren't amateur hour. <laughs> um, I actually put my uh, Stanton T52 back into uh, rotation. Um, I sprayed some of the contact, I think it's called contact cleaner. Um, I sprayed some of that on there. Oh, piano vocal guitar. Okay, okay. Got it. <laughs> I sprayed some of the contact cleaner on the, the pitch adjustment and it, it seems to have helped and it's still not perfect. Um, the, the little light still kind of bounces back and forth. Um, you know, the little red dots, uh, pretty, very great. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it again, um, but we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, I hate that it doesn't have a cover. Um, the cover it came with was, was fabric, and our, our cat got to it, and it just got so covered in cat hair. I was like, forget it. Because <laughs> he, he, he decided he liked sleeping up on the, up on the turntable. <laughs> Yeah, there was more than one time I caught him up there, and it was like, ah! <laughs> so uh, I still have my... Uh, over over here, actually, I have my uh, uh, ATLP60, which is... It's okay. Uh, you know, it has its kind of audio faults, um, but it has a cover. <laughs> and so I keep that next to my computer, and then in the in the front room, I have the Stenton T52, and I still have the, the vertical record player, which I've decided for that one, I'm just going to save it for, for records that are already kind of uh, low fidelity, like, uh, you know, the old records from, you know, 40s and 50s, and um, or music that was recorded during that time anyway. Still on, on uh, 33 and a third, but... I have some box sets of old school music like that. And even music from the thirties, I think. So, you know, the recordings are, you know, pretty, um, noisy al already. And I figured putting them on there through the little tinny speakers, uh, actually is kind of charming, honestly. And it's, it's fun to have it vertical. <laughs> uh, why, why what? Uh, why didn't I like my Stenton T52? Yeah, I have more than one. So, well, it, the the vertical one, I, I wouldn't even call that a, a turntable. I, I would I would call it a record player. Um, I make that kind of differentiation. You know, it has the built-in speakers and um, is very very low end. You know, so. Um, but yeah, the my Stanton T fifty two started having bad issues with the with the pitch adjustment and it, it just drove me crazy like usually i couldn't tell in like a lot of rock music but if i if i tried to play classical or like new age music or something with kind of long drawn out notes i would hear <laughs> uh <laughs> it's okay to have a, a crap one and a and a hi-fi one. <laughs> See, maybe maybe that's that's an issue with the Stanton T line because Matt says he's he had the T fifty. Um. Yeah. So. Uh,
Yeah. Now the Stenson T fifty two. I don't know if you remember, but uh, Best Buy used to have a section of a, a room, in fact, of uh, musical instruments. And when they were closing out that section, um, I decided to go in there uh, to look for one because at the t- <laughs> at the time. I had, oh, I don't remember which record player it was, but it was one of the really, really, really budget record players. It wasn't Crosley. It was another brand. Um, yeah, I don't remember what, which one it was, but uh, that was like my first record player since getting back into records. And within a, within less than a year, it was it was having major issues already. No, it wasn't a Victrola. It started with uh, I want to say it started with a T or a T or an S. <laughs> I don't know, but um, it was just a, a a little one, and the record would even stick out out the side. It had a plastic cover. And you could put the plastic cover down, but the record would still stick out the side. Um, and it had really, really garbage speakers. Um, but if I, if I connected it to external speakers, it sounded fine until it developed this issue where the the turntable, the 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 platter, the platter would kind of rock like that as it made rotations. Um, <laughs> you never got back, never left, really. <laughs> it was a mad platter, yes. <laughs> oh man, I hope mad platter's not going out of business. Oh, oh man, yeah. I'm I'm very concerned about that. I I find it difficult to believe that they would move that quantity of records with the intent of then moving them back at some point. I find that very difficult to believe. Um, I guess one thought is maybe if, if Rhino was still selling records, maybe, maybe their, their stock was getting low. And so Matt Potter said, well, we're not open. So let's take some of the inventory from there and send it over to Rhino records. <laughs> Uh, Red, I, I don't know if you know, but uh, Rhino Records, it's not related to the, the record label. At least I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, it's the, the parent company to Mad Platter. Um, yeah, there's always neighboring cities. Um, and actually, I, I need to get back to Burger Records in Fontana. I think it's in Fontana. I don't know. That doesn't sound right. One of those F C cities. <laughs> um, yeah, there's always neighboring cities. Um, Fullerton, Fullerton. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Fullerton. Yeah, because I knew it was it was further than Fontana. Fontana is not that far. Um, Fullerton. Oh man, if if we could go there, Matt, and we could meet Red there, oh yeah. Um, of course, it smells like marijuana in there, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, back in the old days, in the original location of Mad Platter, which was on Whole Avenue, um, I I think they actually had both locations, both the one where they currently are, and then. The one on Whole Avenue. I think I'm pretty sure they had both locations, uh, but the one on Whole Avenue, you, you go in there and sometimes it would smell like like marijuana. <laughs> uh, oh, hello, uh, uh, Guillerme. I'm sorry, I'm slaughtering your name. Um, I do not have Oasis vinyl. 
I would love to. Um, uh, Matt does. Uh, definitely check out Matt Hayes' channel. Um, Red might. I don't know. Um, but Matt definitely does. <laughs> uh, actually, the only the, uh, I've only partaken uh, secondhand. Um, when I lived in, in Illinois as an adult, like in my mid twenties, um, I had, uh, some roommates and they, they did some pretty heavy smoking. They tried not to do it around me, but uh, one time we were headed somewhere together and one of them lit up in the car and you know, <laughs> Oh, I <laughs> I should do a video pronouncing names. I know. I, uh, Guillermo in Spanish. Guillaume in French. And William in the rest of the world. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Oh, Guillermo in Portuguese. Okay. Did I say it better that time? It, it sounded better to me anyway. Guillermo. Uh, anyway, oh, I'm bad. <laughs> yeah, so I should do a, a video, probably just pronounce, you know, names of the world. <laughs> I I even I even ha have trouble saying the the uh, Spanish version Guillermo. It it doesn't it doesn't roll off my tongue, unfortunately. But I'm easily tongue tied, so. Um, Do I know something about the uh, Voxoa turntable? The name sounds very familiar. Um, names and foods. I could I could be I could be eating things and and pronouncing names at the same time with my mouth full. <laughs> That'd be a real challenge. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, even even some regular words I, I pronounce weird, uh, and my wife laughs at me. So <laughs> we'll probably just do a few more minutes here, uh, just because um, we're going to have to get ready to go soon. But uh, yeah, I had a, a good little audience, so I you know I was pleased to. Um, share this stuff and and uh, keep it going for a while. I thought it was going to end in like 45 minutes, but here it is almost an hour and 40 minutes. So so what, what, what's the story of Voxola? Another interesting name for me to to pronounce. <laughs> um, it it sounds fancy. Oh, okay. They make turntables identical uh, to t uh, techniques. 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 See, there we go again. <laughs> Uh, techniques, no. Um, <laughs> uh, huh. I haven't heard of that brand. Now, is it less expensive than Technics? Or is it comparable? Or is it more expensive? That would be interesting. Yeah. So Matt, I, I oh you're you're leaving Matt? All right, all right. Or you left maybe? Yeah, he has like five kids to feed. No, not not that many, but <laughs> uh, okay, less expensive. Okay, but it's still a, a good quality turntable. Ah, uh, yeah, the average vinyl collectors. I'm definitely. I I considered changing my channel name to Lo-Fi Vinyl Guy, 
now that someone's probably going to steal it, but um, <laughs> uh, just because to me, it doesn't matter what you play it on as long as you can play it. <laughs> I mean, of course, ideally, I'd like to have a $2,000 or $10,000 turntable, of course. But, uh, yeah, you know, if I can only play something on a cheap little record player, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> um, so it's a very good one. Okay. Huh. I'll have to look into that. Voxoa. Voxoa. Yeah. It is really getting warm. Is is? I think this could be well into the 90s today. Ooh, I feel it. I feel it. Interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. It says I have five people watching, and there's only two commenting. So we have some lurkers. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Only because the average vinyl idiot gets his audio advice from YouTube morons and record stores. Uh, how many records do I have? Um, uh, I lost track a long, long, long time ago. Um, I'm guessing, and th this is almost purely a guess, uh, I'm guessing between 2,000 and 3,000. Um, and I probably have uh, probably about 1,000 cassettes. And at least at least several hundred CDs. Maybe maybe I'm up over a thousand now. Um, I have way too much music. Well, I can't really say that because I don't I don't I don't truly believe that. <laughs> I have too much music for the house. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so uh, I've I've been collecting again for oh I, I I don't remember the year I started doing these videos because that was when I started collecting again I, I want to say it's been eight years ah <laughs> style of music um, yeah if you go back and watch my videos you'll see how eclectic I am. <laughs> I literally love everything from classical music to world music to classic rock to death metal to experimental music to noise. I I love it all. So and you'll find all that on my <laughs> on my channel. Uh yeah, I, I think I'm known for having absolutely no focus to my collection other than music I can afford. <laughs> um, yeah. So, well, I hate to cut this short, but I do need to get ready to go. And then, um, uh, I believe our, one of our dogs is asking to go out. Um, in her old age, she can only hold, it for about two hours a little over two hours so and we're almost at that for this video <laughs> um yeah so anyway thank you so much for joining me i it's been it's been a ton of fun coming back and doing this i'm gonna try and do these um i'm probably gonna do them sunday mornings again um but we'll see uh it it just worked out that i ended up being off today so um thank you so much red and I'm, I'm gonna be looking for those videos that you promised okay um <laughs> uh, yes i'm gonna go out with the dogs um i won't drink a beer but i i will definitely drink something very good in your honor guillerme um yes yeah. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. <laughs>